and we are rolling. Hey guys, I'm your friend Jake Dominguez, and I am super excited to talk to you guys today because maybe about an hour and a half ago, I just saw probably one of the greatest films I have ever seen. Yeah, that deserves talking about it. It deserves a review, right? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So let me start off a bit more professionally. Today I'm reviewing Silence, the latest film by Martin Scorsese. Silence tells the tale, inspired by real historical events, about two priests, two Jesuit priests, who are sent, or who agreed to go by the church, to go over to Japan to find this father who apparently has apostatized from the church as well as to spread Christianity uh, throughout Japan. It's a very interesting event in history which frankly I didn't know anything about. And I have to say, this movie blew me away. I mean, to say that it blew me away is an understatement. This film, I don't even know where to begin. Martin Scorsese is one of the greatest living directors of all time. He's a genius. He's an absolutely brilliant filmmaker. I, I, he's made so many classic films, and this film... I just saw it an hour and a half ago, so... To say it's my favorite film he ever... He has ever directed, that I've ever seen, might be a little too soon, and might just me, be me hyping it up in my head, but... Wow, Th this movie is masterfully directed by him. Martin Scorsese, like I said, he's one of the greats. But he has, this is project, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm sputtering because of how excited I am to talk about this masterpiece of a movie. He has wanted to make this movie Silence based on the novel for about over 30 years or so. This has been a dream project of him for a long time. And according to what I've read, in his crazy amount of humility, the reason he spent so long to make it is because he felt he wasn't ready yet. He wanted to be spiritually ready and just prepared to tell such like an important, huge story. And I can't admire him enough for that. He waited to make this film that he desperately wanted to make. He waited till he was ready. He didn't wait until he won an Oscar. He didn't wait until he had a few hit films under his belt, although he obviously has had that. And he has won an Oscar. But all of that wasn't enough. He wanted to wait till he was ready. He knew he was ready to, to sit down and make this movie. and Or to get up and run and make this movie, to be more exact. And I can't respect him enough for doing that. This film... I don't even know where to begin. I could spend hours talking about this film. Let's talk about the filmmaking in general. It is brilliantly directed. The same Martin Scorsese brilliantly directed a movie is like saying the sky was blue today, but every shot in this movie is there for a reason. You know that Martin Scorsese and the director of photography, whose name I'm forgetting right now, I'm so sorry. He's a, he's, he's a genius, whoever you are. I'm sorry I'm forgetting your name. Every single shot is there for a reason. It's a very long film. It is almost three hours long. It's I think it's two hours and 40 minutes, or around there is the exact runtime. But you know what? I was never bored, and it wasn't like there wasn't any scenes that didn't need to be there. Every scene felt exactly the amount of time it should have lasted. The acting, Andrew Garfield, probably the best performance he's ever given in his career. Between this and Hacksaw Ridge, he's having the, one of the greatest series you can have for an actor. Adam Driver, fantastic as well. Now, Adam Driver, uh, <laughs> of course, is the actor who gave us Kylo Ren. And I gotta say, every time I go to see a movie by him, I'm always a little nervous. Like, I'm just gonna see Kylo Ren because I'm a Star Wars geek and I watch that movie all the time. Fortunately, Kylo Ren pretty much never entered my head once. That goes for this film and the other film he was in earlier this year, Midnight Special, which I also loved. He's that great of an actor. Also, we probably live in a more easier time for some actors. When I look back at what Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher, and even Harrison Ford to some degree, they're all kind of typecast in their roles, and you know, famously. And fortunately, I think we're, in today's film industry and culture, 
it's a little easier to get, you know, variety in certain roles. But I guess I'm getting off topic. Let's talk about silence some more. But this movie shows that Juan Scorsese is a ma master of atmosphere. Every sound, the sound design in this movie is incredible. You feel like you're there. When you, feel, when you hear the crickets chirping or the birds singing, the sound of the wind, every decision in this movie is there for a reason. Now, let's talk about, really quickly, about some of the, the the theological implications in this movie. I don't want to get too much into it because it'll go way over my head. I, I, obviously, I, I don't feel justified or qualified to even begin to talk about everything this movie does. But, man, what I loved about Silence is that this is a film that someone can look at and have a completely different reaction to. I've gone online and read reviews, and that's exactly what I've, what I've seen. It's only justified that. Silence is interesting because, make no doubt about it, this is a religious film. It is a Christian film. This is about, this is as religious as Cecil B. DeMille's The Ten Commandments. If you went in the store and you looked at the different genres of movies, uh, Silence would be in the religious section. That's what this is. This is very Catholic, very Christian. It's the whole theme of the movie. And it's interesting to compare this to other faith-based films that I've seen over the years. I mean, I've seen a lot of them, and they're just, a lot of them are kind of cheesy, they're not great. And I've always wondered, you know, why that is. As a Christian myself, as a believer myself, that's my baggage coming into this movie. I, I look at what Martin Scorsese is doing in terms of capturing his faith on film. And what he does is very interesting. A lot of religious films aren't really about answering questions. They just give you the answers and they tell you that is the answer. And as a believer, as a Christian, I tend to agree with what they're saying in terms of, you know, a belief in the Savior and that sort of thing. It's the greatest message you can give, again, as far as I'm concerned, and I know it to be true. However, what Martin Scorsese does is that he gives a lot more room for the audience. What he does in this movie is he raises questions. We see characters make decisions that we don't know if if I would make the same in that situation. He makes, he shows us questions, and gives, shows us scenes, stuff that happened in real life, and he's saying, this is what happened. This is the history of Christianity, really, in general. It's here in Japan, but in a lot of ways, it's not too abnormal elsewhere here. This film examines what it really means to be a believer in a faith. It is specifically to be a real Christian, but it could be any, any religion, really. It shows us what it means to have real faith. The two priests in this movie, especially the main character as played greatly by Andrew Garfield, he looks at the people he's teaching, and he, in a way, when he sees them being persecuted, he's scared by it, he's confused by it, and this is because he was questioning his own faith. He's asking himself, is this my fault? Did I do this? And why does God allow this? These are the questions which are touched upon in silence. There's all sorts of great questions in this movie. What is missionary work? How do you know it's you being a missionary for God instead of you just being a missionary for yourself, for your own glory? What's the difference between having uh, convictions are just being just stubborn, being prideful. These are all questions that are asked in this movie. And Martin Scorsese doesn't shake us by the head and tell us what to think. He shows us what happened, and I think he knows what he thinks, but he doesn't want us, he doesn't pound us over the head. He, he showed us this is what happened, and it's up to you to, to, to interpret that image the way that you want. I could go on and on and on and on about this movie. I've already gone longer than I wanted to be honest. This video is going to be way too long and I'm still getting used to this obviously, but wow, this movie really emotionally impacted me. It's an important film. Everything about this movie just worked. I mean, it's just an outstanding film. It is a masterpiece. And I've gone, you know, I've talked a lot and blabbered on a lot about the religious themes of this movie. But what's so great about it is that you don't need to be a believer in any particularly religion or even Christianity 
to en enjoy this film. And you can still appreciate it. And, and I say appreciate because maybe I shouldn't have said enjoyed. Because this isn't a very entertaining film. This is, like I said, a long film. It's a very serious. And it's realistic is what it is. This is, this is what happened. And for some audiences, they may not be ready for this film. You have to go into this movie kind of knowing what to expect. I can totally understand why someone would be kind of bored or confused by this movie. I have talked to people and read responses online by people who are confused on how to feel about it. And even I'm still confused about it. If it seems like this review is completely just me blabbering on about it, which partly because of the reason I'm just not used to doing these kind of videos, but hopefully I'll get there. <laughs> it's because I don't even really know how to feel about it. There's a lot to this movie that I need to think about. I need to watch it a few more times. And I don't know. You kind of, Sometimes you see a film and you just need to let it settle. You know what I mean? However, having said that, one thing I do know about this film is that it is a masterpiece. Honestly, the more I think about it, it's probably one of the greatest films I have ever seen and Martin Scorsese has again established himself as the bravest filmmaker working today. Again, this is one of the greatest films I've ever seen by him. It might be my favorite film I've ever seen by him. And that's saying a lot. I'm going to give Silence an A+. Plus. You see that? That was me signing out an A+. Plus. Yeah. <laughs> Man, guys, please, please, please go see this movie. It is worth seeing. It is worth seeing as quickly as you can. Thank you for watching this video. If I can say one more thing before I go, and this is just my feelings about silence in a nutshell. Boy. And this is going to sound kind of random and kind of strange. But it made me wish Roger Ebert was still alive. Roger Ebert has been, like, my favorite film critic for years and years and years. I used to read every single review he published. I've read his books. And I've been recently reading some of his great movies series of books. And he's been a huge inspiration to me. And famously, he was a best friend and huge admirer and writer and supporter of Martin Scorsese ever since his first films. Wow, I wish he was still alive so I could read his review of his friend Juan Scorsese's latest masterpiece. I think it's the kind of movie Roger Ebert would have loved to write about. And there you go. More than an A+, more than anything, more than any silly award, that is really probably the highest compliment I can give a movie. So thank you, Juan Scorsese, for that. Guys, thank you for watching. You guys are awesome. Thanks for your patience with me. I have tons of great things planned for this channel. And most of all, I want you to know that I'm always there for you. Thank you for being my friend. You guys are the best. I'll see you next time.